Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine and Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at a Range. Now, as you can see, we're back in the conservatory. Um, we we're able to do this today mainly because the wife's not here. So we're in the dry and hopefully it won't be raining anytime soon. This is a question that we've been asked quite a lot by viewers. What about the new budget compressors that you can basically buy off of eBay? Um, there are two different sorts. Now, there are the ones that run on 12 volt. You can plug into the car and you literally can plug these directly into the gun. Not really designed for filling an air tank. It's things like the Nomad or the cheaper versions that you get off of eBay. Now, if you're interested in seeing a video on one of those, please let me know in the comments below or drop me an email and we can arrange to get that done. But what I want to do is I want to look at these. Now, these are the essentially the clone of the Heng Yong or Yong Heng. I think it's Heng Yong. <coughs> Sorry. I apologize if I'm a bit croaky. I've had a stinking cold and I'm only just getting over it. But this compressor will charge an air bottle up to 300 bar and it cost me 130 pounds off of eBay. Now, is it any good? I don't know. Let's have a look. I've done a ton of research on these and, and be honest with you, a lot of the feedback I've been getting is, yeah, do you know what? They're actually pretty good. They do seem to work, but there's a couple of things you need to know and that's what we're going to go over today. So welcome to Life at a Range and now let's have a look at our budget compressor for a PCP. Although you could circumvent all this and just buy a Springer because Springers are better and look, we all know Springers are better, so you don't need any of this sort of thing. You've got, bang. Everyone has people like you, you get girls, it's wonderful. Or if you're a girl, you get boys. Basically, go out, buy a Springer, forget all this stuff. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Well, basically, we're going to show you how to set one of these up from taking it out of the box um, to putting in the oil, to sorting everything in there, the different equipment you need to make sure that this will work for your gun. And then we'll actually show you how to use it to charge a gun and how to charge a bottle. Now, there's a couple of things we need to know before we get going. If you buy one of these straight off of eBay, you're going to need to buy a couple of extra bits as well. Now, as you can see on the side here, we've got these, which a lot of you will recognize as a quick fill. The problem is these aren't the quick fills as you know it. These are eight millimeter by M10, I think they are. Whereas the British ones that you use to attach to the front of a day state or the things that we attach our quick fills to, they're one eighth BSP. So you're going to need an adapter from Best Fittings. They're about five pounds. And basically it will enable you to attach your whip or your quick fill for your regular gun onto your whip and anything. So if you check in the description below, we will put a link to everything you're going to need for today. But and we'll put a screenshot right at the end of the video showing you what you need. Now, when you buy the unit, it will come essentially boxed up like this. Got some of these pipes which are very, very crinky. Oh, sorry, yeah, they're, yeah, they're not very good. Um, and a little water pump. Um, you've got to make sure that the water flows well, but we'll go into that in a minute. So you might need to replace those if they're not very good. But the thing that is most important is when you purchase this, that is all you get. Now, you get that and you get this whip for charging your gun. Now, they call this a moisture separator. Yeah, okay. Um, it's full of these. <coughs> Sorry, ill. And these are just little bits of foam. <coughs> Sorry, I'll try and edit that out. And basically, these little bits of foam, they'll take little bits of debris out, but they're not going to take any oil or any real water out, especially if it's on a muggy day and there's moisture in the air. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sucking moisture in from the air, you're going to be compressing it down, and you're going to be putting it into a steel cylinder or a rifle cylinder, which is obviously made out of steel. Now, I'm sure as many of you know, steel and water, meh, 
not the best buddies. There's this little thing called uh, iron oxide or rust. And then all of a sudden, you've got a 300 bar cylinder with rust on the inside eating its way out. And that is what you call a bomb. Um, all cylinders must be tested every five years. Do not use these to circumvent that test. You still need to test your air cylinders because you are driving around with something that has got an immense amount of pressure. And if that fails, you won't have the back of your car left. It's in the boot of your car. So still have your cylinders tested on a regular basis. So what do we do? How do we make sure that the air that we've got coming from our compressor into our bottle or our gun is dry? Well, we purchased one of these. This is an aftermarket cylinder made out of brass. And inside, we just unscrew it. Talk amongst yourselves. Tell you what, I'll go and get the spare one. It'll be easier than taking it apart. You get two. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so inside one of these, we have one of these. And what this is, is we have activated charcoal here to take out moisture. Then we have a couple of these little foam bits just here. And then some pellets are going to take out more moisture, followed by another foam bit. So it's traveling all the way through here. So by the time it gets to the end, the air should be nice and dry. Now, the thing to remember with these is if you are a diver, they still don't recommend it for diving unless you actually have two of these in line and then they say it should be dry enough to use for diving. Really not sure if I would trust something that I purchased off of eBay for £130 to go diving with. But if you're a diver and you use these, let me know. Um, I'd be really interested to see if anyone actually out there uses these for diving. So why have this? Well, as you can see on the front of the unit, we have a quick fill. Now, when I first attached this, um, it, I had a little bit of an air leak. So I just wrapped the thread, wrapped the thread with PTFE tape, which you can get any from any plumber's merchants for about 30 or 40 P tightened it up and that, uh, that fixed that. But what this is good at is you get these again, the quick fills, these are the eight millimeter quick fills that you get in the pack. You get a pack full of little bits and pieces, um, that you can attach with. So this just clips in here. Now you've got that through, you've got your new adapter on there, which you attach like that. And then just tighten it up with spanner if you've actually got the correct size spanner. And then obviously now you've got your uh, adapter, which you can plug into your rifle. So now everything is attached and it's ready to go. So we'll detach that and now we'll just talk more about the unit itself. Okay, so when the unit comes to you, there are a couple of things that are really important. The first thing you have to remember is it comes to you without any oil in it. So you will need to buy oil. Now, some of these units come and they recommend using hydraulic oil, but I think that has been lost in translation. Now, I've done a load of research, as I said, on these units, and there are two things that will kill these very, very quickly. Number one, is if you overheat them, and we'll go on to that in a minute when we talk about water cooling. And then number two is using bad oil and not changing the oil on a regular basis. Now, this was recommended to me. I bought it off of Amazon. It's compressor oil. It's fully synthetic. Um, it was about £12, um, um, ISO VG46. Um, again, I'll put a link to it in the description. And as you can see, it's lovely and clean. What they recommend with these units is that once you have run them for 30 minutes, you change the oil because that is the oil 
after running it for just 30 minutes. You see the difference in the two? And they recommend that after you've done it again for 30 minutes, you change the oil. And after you do it again, you change the oil. So for the first couple of hours, change the oil every 30 minutes and then change the oil every couple of hours. Um, it basically will just help prolong the, uh, you know, the longevity. You know, it will help with the longevity of the machine. Um, when the unit comes, the oil filler is just here. Now, what this piece here is, this is an air breather. Now, you will have a travel screw that will be in there. You remove the travel screw, you put it in your box, and you replace it with an air breather. Um, I lost my air breather. So I bought another one. I gained a few pounds off of eBay, but actually the company that I purchased this from off eBay, they actually sent me another one. They were really, really good. Um, that just screws in. So you unscrew it there. You pour your oil in. Put this back in. You do it. don't need to put a spanner on it. Just do it up finger tight and make sure that it's not actually uh, leaking when the unit's running. And when it's time to drain the oil, you've got the little drain screw just here. You unscrew that, it's a 10 millimeter bolt, that comes out and the oil comes out. Now, if you can see here, I'll put a picture up. Here is the window where the oil goes in. There's a little red dot. Fill it up so that the oil is literally just covering the red dot. Now, I found that to be around about 200 milliliters of oil or 250 grams worth of oil. Um, you you know not all these machines are identical but that is for this machine but obviously follow your instructions and make sure that you've got the correct oil the correct weight and the correct amount and replace your air breather because if you try and run it without that in it um boo. remember these things are running at 300 bar they're not to be messed with now, okay so we're going to fill up our cylinder sorry we're going to fill up our compressor with oil so we've taken the breather tube out i really wish i had a funnel okay these little trifle pots i need a bit more I say, if you weigh it out around about 250 grams, that should be around about the correct amount of money. I always like prefer doing oil things in weight as opposed to volume. It's a bit more accurate. Right, we're just going to wait for this to settle. Yeah, we need a drop more. Oh, we're nearly at the uh, red dots. So get yourself a cheap funnel. There we go. Okay, so we're now at the red dot. We'll put a picture up. Then take your uh, air breather, rub a little bit of oil around the thread, and just screw it in. Now you want to do it you don't want to put any torque on this whatsoever. I just don't have very strong fingers, so I'm just using a pair of mole grips. But don't forget, these are going to put a huge amount of torque on them if you enable it. So you just want to feel, nip up just there, and then you're done. So we're now full of oil, and we're ready to go. So the next thing is going to be fill up some water, and let's see if we can get this thing running. Okay, so the pump is water cooled. Essentially, you get a tiny little pump like that. Um, it just pumps water from a five gallon bucket up into the bottom of the pipe, goes up, it goes around the piston, it comes out the other side into the return pipe, which goes back into the bucket. So it's cooling, it's cooling, it's cooling, it's just recirculating the water all the way around. Now, what a lot of people do is they take a two litre Coke bottle, they fill it three quarters with water, they freeze it overnight, they fill their bucket up, they put the Coke bottle in so that 
you've got a nice cold water and it pumps around the machine and it keeps that cold, that, that water cool. Because trust me, after running this for 30 minutes, that water, you're not going to want to put your hand in it. It's going to be that hot. Um, <clears throat> some people actually connect this to the mains. So they've got a constant flow of water going through straight from the mains. If you're happy to do that, it's a really good idea, but you mustn't run this basically, you know, without a, a water source rotating through it because you'll just melt the piston. So, you know, that is really important. Um, the other thing that some people do is if you live in an area that has got really high lime scale, get yourself a, a you know, the large jugs, large water jugs you can buy. Um, get one of those, filter it through a Brita filter, take all the lime scale out and just use that as your water source. Um, so you haven't got any lime scale in it and you're not putting lime scale through the machine. So basically keep it running, make sure that everything is, is good to go before you start firing up. What I like to do is I fill my bucket up, I stick my ice pack in, I run it through the machine, make sure that everything is going. Um, I've actually got, I don't know where I've put it, um, I've actually got a bulldog clip, which I clip to the side and I put that pipe through the bulldog clip to make sure that it's running straight back into the bucket. And then when I've finished charging, uh, whatever it is I'm charging, and the machine is switched off because this runs on a separate plug to the machine, I just leave it running until the temperature gauge has reduced from, I think it runs at about 48 degrees, down to your ambient temperature of about 20 degrees. You're not going to hurt it just by continually running water through. So let's plug our little pump in. Might even be worth getting yourself a better pump. You know, the more water you can put through it, the better it's going to be. So the water's coming in here via the pump out the top, circulating around. But you can see that flow of water, it's not brilliant. It will do, but it's not brilliant. But just keep it flowing, keep it flowing. Um, I also don't like to submerge the pipe. I prefer it just to run straight in. Um, so it's not actually submerged under the water, so it's just flowing. So that's why sometimes you just need to make sure it's hooked to the top. Um, I haven't got my ice bottle. Um, I used this the other day, and I, I forgot to refreeze it. So, But usually this would have an ice bottle in it. So you can see it's pumping around, and this is the other reason why you mustn't walk away from your compressor, because if for some reason the pump stops working, you're not going to have the cooling effect and your compressor is going to go bang. So that's why you should always stick with your compressor. Um, the other thing that I was recommended is try and keep your bucket at the same height of your compressor or just below it because it's not a very powerful pump. And if this is like all the way on the ground and this is maybe on a shelf and it's having to pump that water all the way to the top, then it's again, it's going to be a slower flow. So try and keep your bucket roughly about the same lev level as your pump. Now, also up the top here, you see we've got a little brass bit on the top of the piston. Within here, you have a thing, let me just get this, called a burst disc. Now, this is the safety device for the unit. And for those of you who don't know what a burst disc is, it's a very simple piece of equipment. All it is, is a very, very thin, see it's so thin I can't even get it, my fat fingers, a very thin brass washer. And that is designed to basically disintegrate at just over 300 bar. So that if you are, if you're silly enough to be charging a cylinder, and I don't mean to insult you, but trust me, if, you, if you're using one of these, don't walk away from it. Sit there and watch it. These things are going running incredibly high pressure. But if you do walk away and it overpressures, that burst disc will explode or will burst. You then unscrew this nut at the top, take that out, take your burst disc, drop it back in, screw it back, and the unit will run again. So it is fail safe, but uh, I don't really want to be blowing stuff up and things like that, or bursting discs and, and, and things like this. Um, but never walk away from one of these. Now, when the unit is running, 
you have a temperature gauge on top, which was working up until yesterday, but it appears that the battery has run out. Typical, always happens just before you do a video. And the other thing you need to know is these pipes here will get absolutely red hot to the point where if you accidentally touch them, it will leave a mark on your hand, which may never go away. Um, no word of a lie, I think you could probably get a third degree burn off of these things. So if you're going to run one of these and you've got kids running around, don't let them anywhere near it, but just be really, really careful. So both these pipes, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty dangerous. Now, the other thing is when you run it for the first time, what I did, I got it all running. I, I literally sorted it all out, started charging stuff. And I just run my hand around, with, obviously without touching, and you can feel any kind of leaks. And then I just switched the unit off, and I just went in with a spanner and just tightened everything up where I had some leaks. Because I think when these are put together, they're put together so quickly and they're thrown out the door. So you will need to do a little bit of work on them just tightening stuff up and just making sure that everything is. So we've got oil in the unit. We've got water running through the unit. So now let's charge an air tank. Okay, so we've got our flow of water running through. We've got our unit plugged in. Our temperature gauge has now started to work again, 15.1, but the battery is on its way out. So now it's time to charge. Now, there's a couple of, again, really important things to remember. We've got our quick fill. So we're going to clip our line in. So we've now got, coming from the compressor, through our initial separator, through our line, into our main moisture evaporator, which I think is actually something from Star Wars, but you know what I'm talking about. And now we've got our little three litre cylinder with our whip, which we're going to attach to the end. And we're going to just tighten that up. Really should use a spanner for this, not mole grip. I'm an absolute animal. One day I learned, do you know what? My dad was a very, very senior, serious engineer. And I honestly say he will be rolling in his urn seeing me doing stuff like this. Okay, so we're all attached. So now when we plug this in, we are going to start putting air into our tank. But how do we do that? Now, this is really important. On this unit, on the right and on the left, you've got your high pressure and your low pressure valves. And they quite simply screw in and screw out. So there you have basically your vent, um, your vent um, for, for venting the unit. Now, this is currently closed. So if we tighten these up, I mean, when you start one of these units, you should always start them with the vents open. It makes it easier on the piston. If you start the unit and then you close these, basically what will happen is you will put a load of pressure through your lines and it's got nowhere to go. So what you want to do is you want to open up your valve here, open up these, might help to plug your compressor in, And then we'll switch the compressor on. Now, we close these two, and it's charged and it's filling. And then, when you want to switch it off, reduce the air here, and then close your valve. Let it run for a few seconds. And then we switch off. But continue 
to let the water, sorry, continue to let the water run through the system because we want to keep this nice and cool. So again, to recap, when it's time to start charging the unit, open up your bleed valves on the side. Open up your air tank so that everything is open. Start the unit. Close your valves on the side, obviously leaving this open. When it's time to stop charging, open up your valves and then close your air cylinder. If you do it the other way around, you're essentially putting all of the pressure from this piston through this line and it's got nowhere to go. And that is when you are going to start causing damage to this type of unit. So now let's have a go at filling a gun. Okay, so now we're going to fill the rifle. Now, I'm slightly nervous about this because I haven't actually done it before. But we've got the same setup. We're connected through our desiccant filter. But now we've got our probe on the end. And we've got my lovely HW100. And we're going to plug the probe in there. Now I'm going to point the rifle at myself so I can keep an eye on the gauge. Because obviously we've got a gauge on top and we've got a gauge on the front of the rifle. Now again, we are starting with the valves open. Now, the one good thing about filling a gun, unlike a bottle, is it's got a non-return valve. So we're not going to drain air out the rifle. So basically, we've got a probe in, we're going to switch the compressor on, we're going to close the valves, and we're going to watch really carefully both this gauge and this gauge. Now, this is something to remember. This compressor, the green, runs up to 3,000 PSI, to 300 bar. That gun doesn't. On, on the HW100, having a look, it runs out at approximately 200. If you charge this up to 300 bar, the cylinder could very well explode. I'm really nervous, to be honest with you, about using this type of compressor to fill a rifle. I would much rather use something like the Nomad. But we're going to give it a go and we're going to see how quick it goes. We're currently on... 130 bar and we're going to charge it up to 200 so let's see how we go fire up close the valves and we're up to 150 <laughs> We don't appear to have any leaks of air, and we've got a good flow of water going through, and the rifle is charging. It's all looking good. Not a good idea to put your face so close over the top of one of these, because if it explodes, you'll get shrapnel in the face, and not good. I don't know if you can hear me, but this is very, very loud. And my wife in the other room is sitting there getting really, really angry. Also, the rifle is gradually working its way across the table. Okay, so that seems to be charged up. So again, we are going to open up the valves. Just let it run for a second. And then we're going to switch off. We're currently at about 52 degrees. So we'll continue to let the water run through the system and cool it down and wait for this to cool. So that's pretty much how to do it. So it's very, very similar. Again, start with the valves open, charge the rifle. And then once the rifle is charged, stop the unit. Sorry, then crack the valves, open the valves, release the pressure from the lines. And then once all the pressure's been released, turn the unit off, but let continue to let the pump cool the unit down. Um,
that's pretty much about it. Okay, so the big question is, how long will one of these compressors take to fill up a, an air tank? Well, there is a fairly simple uh, a way of, of working this out if you're good at maths, which I'm not, but we'll go through it. If you've got a three liter bottle and it's 300 bar, it's three times 300, which is 900 cubic inches, divide that by the liters per minute of the unit, which in this case is 50 liters per minute. So that's 900 divided by 50, which is 18, so 18 minutes. So if that bottle was completely empty, it would take 18 minutes to, uh, to fill. So if you've got something like a 12 liter 300 bar, this is where the maths, and you're going to let it run down to 150 bar, and then you want to top it up to say 280. That's 130 bar of pressure. So 12 times 130 divided by 50, and there you have your numbers. So instead of me doing it in my head, we're going to put it up here, or we're going to put it up here, or we'll put it up a blank screen. It'll show you roughly how long it'll take to fill, and that's how long they take. Um, to fill up my HW100 from 110 bar to 180 bar, I think it took about a minute or just over a minute. Um, but yeah, they're quite efficient. But I say, if you're filling up a big 12 litre from empty, that's going to take you, I think it worked it out, about an hour and 10 minutes. So what you need to do is split it up into, I would split it up into three. 25 minutes, 25 minutes, 25 minutes, and let it cool down in between hand. It, it just puts less stress on the unit. So what have we learned today? Well, yes, you can certainly fill a three litre bottle uh, with one of these units. Um, I did one the other day. I think it was down to about 120 bar. Be honest with you, because I can now put air into it, I'm not going to fill it up to 300. I don't know what this burst disc is set at. There is a huge difference between 280 and 300 bar in pressure. So I'm going to fill it up to about 280 and then just continually keeping it topped up. I think that's the, the best way to do it. I didn't really like filling the gun direct from this. Um, I'd rather fill the bottle and then fill the gun, but that's my choice. Um, if I was just going to buy a compressor to fill a rifle, I would go for something like the Nomad or the, you know those versions, which run on 12 volt. You plug them into the car and you just plug them straight into your gun, and that's what they're designed for. Just make sure that whatever one you get has also got a decent desiccant filter because you don't want to be putting moisture into your rifle. I think for £130, they're absolutely great. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, but if you live near to a dive shop, buy yourself a 12 litre, 300 bar bottle for a couple of hundred pounds. It costs 10 quid to fill it up and you're going to get perfectly clean, breathable air all the time. But I'm aware that not everybody has got that facility. So 130 quid for a compressor, 50 pounds for the extra uh, moisture separator. Uh, it's under 200 by the time you bought an extra whip from Best Fittings and your adapter, and then you're good to go. As ever, please keep your bottles in test. Make sure that they're safe to use. This stuff is incredibly high pressure. If you're, in, if you're at all not sure about anything, please speak to somebody or get yourself a dive bottle, or as we've said, buy a Springer. Um, Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I, you know, I hope this will, will help you um, and will guide you. Um, we've got some great content coming up. Um, I'm going to go and play with some real guns, some 308s, and we've got a very special guest joining us. Emily, the psychopathic video editor, will be joining me, and hopefully I will survive the experience. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, let me know uh, if there's anything else you'd like me to, to cover. Um, our next video is going to be entitled, What to Do When You Suck. And it's something that I currently really do know a lot about. Oh, and one final bit of great news. 
I've got permission from Pete Sparks. We are going to be doing a vlog from a competition, but not just any competition. We're going to be doing it from round one of the UK HFT National Series. And Pete has very kindly given us permission to do that. So thank you so much. We'll see you all again very, very soon. Stay safe, take care of each other, and be excellent to one another. Ta-da!